What's going on, everyone? It is Mike along with Andrew once again. We are doing a weekly uh, spread pick 'em show for the NFL season. We start with week one, very unpredictable. But Andrew, welcome. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm ready to uh, win the fans back over after my uh, maybe poor uh, fantasy bold predictions video. Yeah, because uh, Jalen Rager, you know, might not get a thousand yards now. It's a shame. Yeah. Real, real shame, real shame. All right, so let's hop into it. We got the Houston Texans at the KC Chiefs. I have the Chiefs at minus 10. Who did you go with for this one? I went Kansas City. Uh, I think the Texans are way too unpredictable, especially in week one. I just I, – I, I, I like the Chiefs. I don't know how the running game is going to go. Obviously, they got Kyle Edwards-Hilaire there. Uh, no preseason. That probably hurts them, but – they got a lot of uh, veterans or one to two to three year players on that offense that I really like there. Like uh, Cole Hardman, I think he's going to have a big year. Uh, obviously, Tyree Kills there, Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes. I, I feel confident with uh, the Chiefs on this one. See, I picked the Chiefs at first, and then I, I said to myself, 10 points is a lot. And I think due to the offseason trade, of course, for Hopkins, I think people kind of just think the Texans are a joke now. But, like, you look at their roster, it's not that bad of a roster. And 10 points is a lot. I think it's the most honesty on this entire slate. I mean, yeah, this is the only double-digit game there is. So, obviously, I know the Chiefs are home. They have, like, the 20% fans and, and things like that. But Deshaun Watson's pretty damn good, and I think they can move the ball. They have the deep threats, and the running game is a question. I know David Johnson, while he's healthy, is a good player. Um, I think they have good linebackers. Obviously, they could get to uh, Mahomes, possibly. So I think they'll keep it within 10. Obviously, it could go off the rails, and obviously Kansas City in that playoff game last year had, what, like 20 unanswered touchdowns? So, I mean, it's, yeah. it's definitely could, it could go your way, but I think 10 points is too much. So I'll take the Texans here. And then you take the Chiefs. So we're disagreeing on the first one. I like that. All right. Yeah. Next we have uh, for the Sunday game, Seattle Seahawks. This is a good one. The Seahawks at the Falcons. Uh, the Seahawks are one point favorites. Who you got? I have Seattle here. And I have a feeling you chose the other side here. But I'm actually I'm, I'm very confident in this one. Uh, this is one that I actually put down. Like if I was old enough, I would actually bet this one. Uh, I think you're basically picking a winner here. Um I think Seattle is just proven. I think they have a nice veteran offense. I don't like Atlanta's defense, especially with no preseason. I think they're very young on that side of the ball, and I, I don't know how they're going to perform right off the bat. Again, it's week one. It's hard to tell, but this is a toss-up game. It really could go either way, but I'm confident in Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. I can't blame you. You're right. It's basically a pick them here. Um, when I was doing my preseason NFL video, I didn't realize how good the Falcons offense was, like depth chart wise. Obviously, we know about Matt Ryan, Julio, Ridley. But I looked at the rest of it. Their offensive line, while it could be shaky, is honestly not that bad. And then you have Todd Gurley brought in. He could be good. You have Hayden Hurst, who also could be good. So, like, I don't think it's that bad of a team. I know Atlanta, I think last year in week one, I think it was against the Vikings. They got killed like 28 nothing. So that kind of makes me uh, fear it. But I like the Falcons enough offensively. I fear the Seahawks is secondary aside from Jamal Adams. Obviously, I know Griffin's a pretty good corner. But really, their defense is kind of shaky. They can't get to the quarterback. That's the one way you can rattle the Falcons offensively. They can't do that too well, in my opinion. Um, I don't really trust the offensive line for the Seahawks. So I will take the Falcons in a close one. I could see you going both ways. Obviously, but once again, I like that we differ on that one. Um, next, we have the Cleveland's at the Baltimore Ravens, the team that I think is going to win the Super Bowl this year. But I do like the Browns as well. But who'd you pick for this one? It's a minus eight for Baltimore. Uh, a little high on this one. This one was kind of a toss up. I kind of banked it on Baker Mayfield here. I'm going to go with Baltimore. Uh, I think right off the gate, I don't think Baker Mayfield's going to perform very well. Um, it's not a good first game for him coming off of a rough season, probably facing one of the best defenses in the league this year. Uh, eight is high. This was kind of a toss-up for me, too. Uh, again, I think it depends all on Baker Mayfield here. If he comes out right off the gate, you know, doing really well, uh, showing flashes, flashes of his rookie season, I think you could see Cleveland take this one. But I, I'm just looking up and down Baltimore's roster. I mean, if Lamar Jackson is anything like he was last year, I mean, they're going to be fantastic. I, I've seen Colin Cowherd predict 16-0, 19-0 Super Bowl. I mean, <laughs> look, that, that might be outrageous as hell, but I, I think it's a possibility. They have a dominant offense. They got Clayus Campbell in the offseason. They're dominant on defense. I'm going to go Baltimore here. 
All right. Yeah, I can't blame you. Um, obviously, it's a lot of points here, eight. But my counter argument, I'm picking the Browns, by the way, to cover the eight. But uh, my counter argument is that they're going to run the ball a lot. They have a good offensive line, in my opinion, and an offensive line that I think can be top 10 in the league. The Browns, it's much improved. They have two really good running backs in Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. So they can milk the clock, keep the ball, keep it out of Lamar Jackson's hands, most importantly. And um, I kind of like the rookie head coach. You know, I like Stefanski, obviously. But mm -hmm. really, I think Baker Mayfield's going to be a lot better this year. And I will also say that I'm pretty sure of the two losses the Ravens had last year, one of them was at home against the Browns. So, I mean, it could happen. I'm not going to say the Browns are going to win this game. But I think they'll keep it within a touchdown, hopefully. So, um, while I do think the Ravens still win this game, I think the Browns will keep it close enough to cover, in my opinion. Um, next, we have the New York, New Jersey Jets at the Buffalo Bills, and the Bills are uh, six and a half point favorites. So, who you got there? I got the Jets. Um, I'm a sucker for the Jets. I predicted ten <laughs> six last year for the Jets. Um, I mean, it was very possible they lost. I think to the Bengals, they lost to the Jaguars, and some other team I'm missing there right at the end. But they could have been ten and six. I don't think Buffalo is going to be great on offense to start the season. A uh, lot of new players on that offense. Uh, Zach Moss, you know, Stephon Diggs. I don't know if they're going to hit it right off the gate. Last year, they weren't a team that scored a lot of points. Their defense uh, kept them in a lot of games. But I think the Jets come out. I think Sam Darnold performs really well. It's kind of weird saying that. But I think, he's, I think he performs pretty, pretty good here. And I, I think they cover six and a half. Six and a half is high for Buffalo. It is. It is. Uh, look, I mean... I don't want to go against you here again, but I honestly feel like the Bills are going to win this game by multiple touchdowns. I have no faith in the Jets this year, especially early on. People are already, you know, say Adam Gase is one fed out the door. Will they play hard for the guy? They don't have C.J. Mosley. No Jamal Adams. I just don't know how they move the ball too well offensively. Obviously, Tredavious White's in a shutdown for Shad Perriman. Maybe they can exploit uh, them in the slot with J Jamison Crowder. But really, Sam Darnold has to play a perfect game here. I, I'm not the biggest Josh Allen guy, but I think he can make enough big plays in this one. I like Stephon Diggs against Pierre Desir. And, you know, I don't really trust the Jets secondary, obviously. So I think they can move the ball on offense to Bills. They can, you know, bring out some big plays, obviously. I'm not out on Sam Darnold completely, but for this game, does he have the weapon to do it? I don't think so. The Bills' defense, I think, could be top five in the league, so I will take the Bills here at home to win by more than a touchdown. Uh, next game, we have the Las Vegas Raiders at the Carolina Panthers. Matt Rule's first game. They have the Raiders as a one-point favorite. Who you got there? Uh, I think we might agree on this one. I'm going with the Las Vegas Raiders here. Uh, too much new for me on that Panthers on the Panthers side. Uh, new coach, new quarterback in a totally different season with no preseason whatsoever. You know, you only got training camp, new playbook to learn. Just too much stuff going on. Uh, the Raiders have the same coach, same playbook, same uh, quarterback there. So I'm confident. Again, this is a toss up. This is uh, one point in the Raiders favor, just like the Seahawks game. But I, I think the Raiders take this one in Carolina. Yeah, this was a really tough one for me, honestly. I had to, like, look at the depth charts once again. But I think the stability is better for the uh, Raiders, obviously, because Carr and Gruden have been together for – this is their third year now, I believe, together. They do have new receivers on the Raiders, a young defense. I mean, you add Damon Arnett there at cornerback. You have two new wide receivers and Edwards and uh, – who is it? Ruggs, I believe. So mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be a uh, – I, I think it's going to be a close one, but I think the Raiders can win this one by three or four points. It's only a one-point difference. So I will take the Raiders here. I'm not too confident in it, but I do think, as you said, the Panthers have the new coach, newer players, a very young defense. I do think it'll be a uh, Raiders win, hopefully, for our sake. Uh, next, we have this is one I like actually a lot the Chicago Bears at the Detroit Lions. Lions, Lions are minus one and a half. I'm all over the Lions. I think you are too, so get into that one. Yeah, uh, I'm all over the Lions on this one. I think this is kind of a mistake by Vegas here. Um, me and you both know Matt Stafford performed incredible last year. And before he went down, I mean, he was in the MVP conversation. When has Matt Stafford ever been in the MVP conversation? And no one's talking about him. The injury kind of covered up that whole season, and I, th I think look, I think Chicago's defense is going to be good again, but I, I just like their offense. I like Galladay. I like Marvin Jones. Um, I like their running back situation even more that they have Adrian Peterson now. May not be good for fantasy because they got three running backs in that room, <laughs> but it's good for the offense, 
and I think they have no problem against Chicago. I don't know why this line is so low. Yeah, I, I can see the Lions winning this one by like 10 points or so. I think they put up a lot of points offensively. As you said, Stafford was, you know, an MVP candidate last year who was on pace for uh, 38 touchdowns and 5,000 yards. Those are MVP numbers. Comes back healthy. There's, uh, I think, more stability in that organization than there is the Bears. I mean, they didn't even know who the quarterback was until a few days ago. So Trubisky's going to have foals over his shoulder, pressure to play well. I mean, that could help him, could go against him. We'll see. I do like the Bears' defense for the season, but I think the Lions at home, inside the Dome, obviously, I think it'll be a really good offensive showing for them. And I just don't think the Bears have the offensive firepower to match the Lions point-wise, in my opinion. Um, next, we have the Indianapolis Colts led by Phillip Rivers. They will be at the Jacksonville Jaguars. The uh, Colts are a minus seven in this game. Is it, uh, is it in Jacksonville or Indianapolis? I feel like I screwed that one up. Do you remember or no? Um, I, have to look real quick. I wrote it down the way you sent it to me, so I have it in Jacksonville. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, cool. Um, well, I actually had this one as an actual bet, and that was tricky to me because I think seven points is high. But I have zero confidence in the Jacksonville Jaguars this year. I think Gardner Minshew is the only thing they have going for him, and I don't even know if he's going to be that good. Hey, DJ um, Chark, say his I name. Think, yeah, look, I think DJ <laughs> Chark and Gardner Minshew are going to be money all season long, but I think the Colts just have it going for him this year. Uh, I know Phil Rivers is a big passing uh, quarterback, but I think uh, they're going to try and implement uh, like a more running style of offense at first. I really like their backs there. If you watch Mike's video that I was on before about fantasy bold predictions, I predicted Jonathan Taylor to have the most rushing touchdowns in the NFL. Uh, I really like their running back group. I think uh, Jonathan Taylor is going to take that over in this game. I see no competition whatsoever with Saxonville anymore, if that's even what you want to call them. <laughs> they have literally no one there anymore. Um, they are obviously tanking for Trevor, if you will. They won't admit it, but we know they are. And this is an actual bet one for me. Yeah, it, it seems like the front office for the Jaguars is kind of all in for getting high picks this year. I think the players will still play hard, obviously. There's a good chance Doug Marone's the first head coach fired. I don't know what the bet is on that, but take that bet if you could do it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just – they have some good players on defense, young players like the Josh Allens and the Caleb on Chasons. CJ Henderson, but like, I just don't think they're ready yet, especially for week one. We're talking about a Colts roster that's really good up and down, basically better at every position group. I do like Garner Minshew, as we said, and I like DJ Chark, but that's not enough to beat the Colts who have a pretty good defense. And then, you know, they don't have any running game, obviously. I mean, Chris Thompson's their best back now. Uh, Raquel Armstead went on the COVID list. So like, who's running the ball for the Jaguars? I have no idea at this point. They all have no yeah. running game. Minshew's going to pass the ball 50-something times. I just don't think that's enough to win the game. Maybe there's some sort of, like, backdoor cover here. They get, like, a late touchdown to somehow make it, like, a six-point game, which would suck. But I think for the most part, the Colts will have control of this game and I think pull away relatively early in this one. Uh, next, we have the Green Bay Packers division matchup. The Green Bay Packers at the Minnesota Vikings. I have the Vikings. It is a minus three and a half, and I think you like the Vikings in this one. I do like the Vikings, but again, this was one of my tougher ones. I'm not going to lie. Um, Green Bay and the Vikings are just totally unpredictable. Even if they both stink or one's really good and one's not, somehow they're always close games. Um, I really think the only way I can see my prediction happening here is I don't even know if they can win by a touchdown in this game, Minnesota. I think Green Bay is way too unpredictable offensively. Uh, but again, I did go with Minnesota here, three and a half. I do like Minnesota's offense. Uh, I think Thielen's going to get a ball, the ball a ton, which is good for our fantasy league because, I mean, <laughs> you love Thielen, I love Thielen, but I got him this year. Uh, Justin yeah. Jefferson, I think he's going to start out slow. I like Dalvin Cook against this defense. Um, I think last year, a prime example of uh, bad running defense for the Green Bay Packers was against the Eagles. I think what the Eagles did in that game is they ran at the linebackers, which is exactly what the Vikings need to do here. Uh, Green Bay lost a lot of linebackers last year. For some reason, the Giants, I guess, fell in love with the Packers linebackers, and they oh, got yeah. them all. But <laughs> I, I think Minnesota, uh, Dalvin Cook especially, is going to have a big game here, and they're going to win. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I didn't really take that into consideration, and I probably should have that. You know, the Minnesota's probably going to run the ball down their throat, and I don't know if they can stop it. You talked about the Eagles game last year. Of course, the NFC Championship game with Mostert uh, comes into mind as well. So can they stop the run is the big question. A lot of people said this is like an Aaron Rodgers revenge tour. He's pissed off. They took a quarterback in the first round. I'm kind of in that boat, and you know I love Aaron Rodgers, obviously. So I'm probably yeah. going to go with the Packers here. 
Um, it is basically they just have to lose by less than a field goal. I think they can do that. Um, last year, I think in this matchup, I think it was in Green Bay, though. They got out to a 21 nothing lead, and the Vikings really came all the way back. I'm pretty sure Green Bay took that game. I forget what happened in Minnesota last year, but I think these teams, they do play pretty close games normally. Obviously, three and a half is not the biggest line, but I will take the Packers here. I think it's possible they win, and hopefully they lose by less than a field goal. Uh, next, we have the Miami Dolphins, and now it's Ryan Fitzpatrick, a quarterback they announced this morning, I believe, or yesterday or something. They are at the New England Cam Newton-led Patriots, and it's a minus seven for the Patriots. Who you got there? Uh, I'm going to go with New England here. Uh, I've only heard good things about Cam Newton so far. Um, he's obviously going to be the starting quarterback week one, and I don't know if the Dolphins' defense can handle it. A lot of new pieces on that defense in free agency that they got, uh, but I, I just don't think week one they're going to be ready for it. I think Miami is an incredibly competitive team. I think they're going to be in most games this year. I think Brian Flores is really good at game planning in that way. They're never out of games, but I think this one's kind of get, going to get carried away from them late. I think at halftime you could see a really, really close score, but I think towards the end you're going to see the better team go, you know, flow away with this one. Right. Yeah, I can see that. I think the Dolphins will somewhat keep it close. I think seven is a pretty good number. This might be a push, honestly. I could see the Patriots winning by exactly seven. I'm in on Cam Newton this year. I, while I don't think he'll put up an MVP season, I think he'll be a good quarterback. Of course, they lost some defenders to Patriots because of the COVID situation. And no other organization knows the Patriots better than the Dolphins, probably, with all the former players they have on there and the coaching staff. So that is a bit fishy. But I did see a, a thing that the uh, Dolphins have not beat the Patriots in New England and back-to-back -back seasons ever under Bill Belichick. So, of course, they won last year in Week 17. Honestly, kind of embarrassed the Patriots. I know they, I think they had to win that game to get a bye. They didn't do it. They lose in the first round. I'm sure that's still in the back of their minds, especially Belichick. They're probably pissed off. They probably want to come yep. out and beat the hell out of the Dolphins. So I do think the Patriots win this game. Hopefully it's by more than a touchdown, but I will take the Patriots for this video. Uh, next we have your Philadelphia Eagles. They are at the Washington football teams. At first, I pick the Eagles, and I think based on a couple reasons and more to go against you, I picked Washington. But go ahead, give us your uh, reason to pick the Eagles here. Kind of caught me by surprise there by saying Washington <laughs> football team. I still have them written down as the Redskins over here. But, yeah, I did pick Philly. And, honestly, you might think I was more confident on this one, but I really wasn't. Um, I think a lot of the Eagles' uh, prime – Receivers like Rieger, we're not going to see Quez Watkins, who they just drafted this year. They're, again, starting off the season a little iffy on the wide receiver position. No Alshon Jeffrey. But I do think they get it done. I think last year's opening game was a little bit closer than it should have been. Again, one of those late touchdowns that made the game seem a lot closer than it really was. Um, they're starting the season off with um, Dwayne Haskins, not Case Keenum this year. Uh, I think it's just – I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference in this game – maybe 10 points at the at the top. Maybe you could see 10 points. You could see 21 points. Really don't know with the Eagles. Uh, being a fan, you really don't know how they come out to the season. They come out slow. They come out fast. They come out in every single way. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Eagles on this one. Six and a half. I think that's a really, really good number. Good job by Vegas there. But I'm going to take my Philadelphia Eagles and Carson Wentz to victory. Are you going to be one of those Eagles fans that picks the Eagles every week, regardless of the line? Or are you going to be like, fair about it? Uh, I think I got no, my answer. I, look, they, they play the Ravens <laughs> this year. They play. They have a really good schedule. I, I think you'll see me go against them quite a few times. Okay, gotcha. Um, all right, so I, I did pick the Eagles at first, and then the more I thought about this, I'm going to go with Washington. I think this is a low-scoring, ugly game. I see it like a – I don't even know what the score would be, honestly, like a 13-10 to 10 type game, maybe a 17-13 type of game. Whoa. Look, I mean – the. Eagles are losing wide receivers here. No Alshon, no Rager. They're going to have to re rely on the tight ends. They're going to have to rely on Miles Sanders in the run game. And honestly, I think they're going to be forced to pass the ball a lot because Washington's front seven is actually not that bad. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. Chase Young is there. Um, they add Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne. Like, they have a bunch of good defensive line players there. Ryan Kerrigan, I think, is still there as well. So, obviously, it's going to be tough to run on them. And if the Eagles can't do that, you're basically forcing Carson Wentz to just pass the ball to tight ends. And I don't know how – well you can do that you know what i mean obviously so it's gonna to be tough to put up a lot of points here it's a low scoring game in my opinion and in that case i think it's a six and a half number i said it was so i will take washington to cover here i still think your eagles win so i will say that but i do think it's a close game so i'll take washington to cover there 
Next, we have the Los Angeles Chargers at Joe Burrow's uh, Cincinnati Bengals, his debut. So right now it is the Chargers minus three. Who you got there? Uh, maybe I've been watching too much hard knocks, but I got the Chargers here. Um, I think I'm not scared of the Bengals defense whatsoever. I think the Chargers running up their throats right away with Austin Eckler. Uh, they're going to use him in the pass game a lot. I think when you have a guy like Tyrod Taylor there, a veteran, uh, if you've watched him play, he likes to go down to the check down a lot, and that's perfect for Austin Eckler. So I think you see that quite a bit. Austin Eckler, if you have him in fantasy, uh, I think he's going to be fantastic in this game. Uh, Cincinnati's offense, you take a look at it, it's not that bad, uh, especially if Joe Burrow plays anything like he did at LSU last year. He's got great weapons, uh, not that good of an offensive line, but he's got great running game, great weapons. If he can get a little bit of time, I could see this being like a shootout high score game. Um, but I do like the Chargers defense, and I do think that's the reason they get it done. Uh, I don't think it's going to be high scoring. It could be a shootout. I think the Chargers defense holds the Bengals down, and I think the Chargers win. Yeah, I, I agree with most of that. Uh, obviously, the unknown here is how good is Joe Burrow in his first NFL game. I mean, he, yeah. he can come out and throw for 303 touchdowns, and all of a sudden the Chargers lose. But I, I do like the Chargers defense enough here. I know they lost Derwin James, which sucks, but I think regardless, they're going to be good enough. Um, of course, the Bengals have a second-year head coach who looks like he's 25. Uh, Joe Burrow is you know, a rookie quarterback, so it's going to be tough for them to get everything going week one. I think due to that inexperience and things like that, I say the Chargers win this game. Tyrod Taylor was on that team last year, so at least you know he has some familiar- familiarity there. They just signed yeah. uh, Keenan Cat- uh, Keenan Allen. I don't even want to. I don't even know what I just said right there. But re <laughs> Keenan Allen. Um, but I do like the Chargers defensively this year. Um, I think they'll keep this one relatively close to the uh, Bengals. But I do think it's a three-point game, so I'll have the Chargers winning by more than a field goal in that one for sure. Uh, next is a really good one: Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, Buccaneers at the New Orleans Saints. It is a minus four for New Orleans. I think we differ on this one. You're a Saints guy, correct? Uh, yes, I am a Saints guy in this one, and I think it would be – I think I would be a more confident Saints guy if we didn't have a COVID situation. They were playing in the Superdome because I think the Saints fans would bring it heavy against Tom Brady's Buccaneers. Wow, that sounded really weird saying that. Tom Brady's Buccaneers. I'm not used to that. Um, but, yeah, I, I like New Orleans in this one. I do think it's going to be a really, really close game. Again, I think Vegas nailed the line here. I could see New Orleans winning by a field goal. I could see New Orleans losing by a field goal. Uh I just think, again, it's an unpredictable team in Tampa Bay with a lot of new pieces at key positions there. I feel more comfortable with New Orleans. I know they're consistent. They didn't really change that much. So I'm going to go the Saints covering four. Yeah, I I like the Buccaneers roster a lot. Obviously, I like the Saints a bit more. But uh, I think this will be one of those games that whoever has the ball last wins. I think these offenses are just like going to keep trading blows. Like one team's going to score, another team's going to score. Whoever gets the ball last will win. And due to that, I think a team might win by a field goal. And I think the Buccaneers do have a chance to win this game, obviously. I mean, they have a really good offense. It's indoors. I can say the same thing about the Saints, of course. But I, I do like the Buccaneers here. I'm a big Bruce Arians guy. Obviously, the Saints have one of the biggest advantages in this season because Sean Payton and Drew Brees have been together since like 2005 or 2006. So, you know, it's it's been a great relationship there for a while. But I do think the Buccaneers have a chance to win this game and it being a minus four for the Saints. I will take the Buccaneers to cover and I think possibly have a chance to win this game. Uh, Next, we have the Arizona Cardinals. They are um, they're at the San Francisco 49ers. It is a minus seven and a half for the Niners, which I thought was a pretty big number. I think we're in agreement on this one. But tell me about the uh, Cardinals here. That's a, that's a huge number, especially when you have a team that played very, very well against the 49ers last year. little different offensive look. Uh, you got Kenyon Drake there now for a full season. Uh, he's going to be the starting back. Uh, obviously, DeAndre Hopkins was acquired from the Texans there. But Kyler Murray showed it last year. He plays the 49ers really, really well. Uh, he reads their defense perfectly. He was probably the best quarterback against the San Francisco defense last year. Um, I don't know what Vegas was thinking on this one. I think someone has to explain it to me why seven and a half. I get they're at home, but there's really no advantage to that anymore in the whole COVID thing. Uh, So, yeah, I'm going to take the Cardinals easily on this one. Yeah, this is one of those fishy lines where you're like, what do they know that we don't know? You know, why is it seven and a half? I figured this would be like more of a four and a half type of number. But, I mean, look, I'm going to take the uh, Cardinals as well. Hopefully we're not wrong about that one. I love their offseason. I think they'll be a good team this year. I think it's a 9 or 10 win team for the Cardinals. So they'll be able to move the ball. And as you said, they played well against the Niners last year. 
I know that Thursday night game, they played well against them. They almost beat them at home. Uh, the one in San Francisco, I'm pretty sure they lost as well, but still it was a close game, a one-score game, I believe. So they play them well. They're familiar. It's a tough matchup in division. And I think to basically say by lose, you have to lose by less than a touchdown, I think that they can do that for sure. So I will take Arizona in that one. Next, we have the Dallas Cowboys, who we hope they lose. They are at the Los Angeles Rams. The Cowboys are two-and-a-half-point favorites. Who you got? I'm going to go with hard knocks again here. I'm going to go with the L.A. Rams, and I think they're not only going to cover. I think they're going to win this game. Okay. Um, I th- Dallas starts off the season really, really good in most seasons with Dak Prescott. Uh, so that does scare me a little bit there. But I just – I like the Rams. I think Jared Goff is going to be incredible this year. I think last year was a little bit of an off year for him. And, look, the Rams were okay last year. I think they went 9-7, and seven, maybe 8-8. Eight and eight. I think they're a much better team than that. I think, you know, last year a lot of different pieces were moving. I think this year they have a lot more chemistry. And I think Sean McVay and the Rams have something special in store for Dallas and the Cowboys. I think Hard Knocks is influencing your decisions for sure, but I think you, oh, you I might be it. right here. <laughs> um, I do like Dallas a lot this year, and I do think the Rams have a chance here, especially with this being a home game, but I'm going to take Dallas here. It's just there's too many offensive weapons. I don't know how I feel about the Rams this year, honestly. Like Part of me really wants to believe in them and think they're a good roster, but then part of me is like, oh, they don't have first-round picks forever. They're you know kind of declining, so I'm not sure what to expect. They'll go as far as their offensive line takes them because that was the main issue last year, and if the offensive line plays well, Jerry Goff will be fine. I do expect a high-scoring game here, probably I don't know, thirty something to twenty-eight or something like that. You know, I expect a higher-scoring mm-hmm. game. I do think the Cowboys ultimately win, but in my heart, I do hope that you're right and the Cowboys actually uh, lose this game. Uh, for the Monday Nighters, the Pittsburgh Steelers at my New York Giants. The Steelers are a four-point favorite, and I think we're in agreement on this one, aren't we? Uh, yes, I hate to disappoint the New York Giants fans in the comments right now, but I'm going to be going with the Pittsburgh Steelers here. Uh, this isn't a biased pick in the slightest. Uh, yes, I'm not a fan of the Giants, but I do really like the spread here for Pittsburgh. Uh, their defense is money. I mean, last year their defense was incredible. Uh, I think a healthy Ben Roethlisberger is going to be key for that Pittsburgh offense. They still won a lot of games last year without Ben Roethlisberger back there, and that's a little scary if you're a Giants fan right now. Um, you go, I, I think their offense is okay. I don't know how I feel about James Conner this year. Uh, I don't know how I feel about big Ben without Antonio Brown. I think he'll be able to get it done. Juju's a good option. Deontay Johnson sleeper video. He's a great option. Uh, but I think Pittsburgh has this one mainly because of their defense. Yeah, no, I I don't disagree with you. I think the offenses of this team are closer than people make them out to be. I think the Giants have a good amount of weapons here that are underrated, but in terms of defense, it's not even close. I mean, the Giants are probably a bottom 10 defense still. Steelers are top three in the league, so it's going to be tough for the Giants to score, obviously. I see it as more of a 31-21 or a 34-24 type of Steelers victory here, so... I will take the Steelers uh, and the points in this one for sure. So uh, obviously I hope I'm wrong here. It would be cool for the Giants to come out and win. It's, you know, first year head coach, Joe Judge. I'm not sure what to expect. Roethlisberger hasn't played in basically a year. So you never know. I think the Giants have a chance to win this game. But if I'm being honest here, I'm probably going to take the Steelers there in the minus four. Uh, Next we have, and last, the Tennessee Titans, the dreaded Monday night football game in week one. I hate these games, by the way. Tennessee Titans at the Denver Broncos. I honestly thought Tennessee was going to be favored here, and it kind of threw me off. But Denver is a a one-and-a-half point favorite. So who you got? Uh, I got Drew Locke and the Denver Broncos here. I think, again, I usually go against the unpredictable teams in week one. I think Denver is an unpredictable team. Uh, I like Drew Locke. I think he's really consistent. Do we see what we saw last year from him? Uh, He's got a totally new offense. It's obvious that's what the Broncos wanted to do this year. And I think doing all that kind of shied away from the Broncos' defense a little bit. And I think their defense is still incredible. Uh, They got a good front seven. Their cornerbacks are okay. Uh, The loss of Chris Harris Jr. I don't think is going to affect them that much. I think he was on the declining side of things anyways. But I was surprised by this line too, especially the way Tennessee finished the season last year. Um, I think, uh, Derrick Henry is going to have a big game, even though, uh, you know, Denver has a pretty decent front seven, an underrated front seven, I would say. Um, but I'm going to go Denver here. I think Drew Locke comes right out of the gate. I think he comes tossing that pigskin and he gets Denver their first win. (laughs) 
Yeah, uh, I mostly agree with you there. Uh, you kind of gave me flashbacks, honestly, of Leonard Fournette running for like 250 yards against the Broncos last year. So now I'm like second guessing myself. <laughs> but while I, d- I do think the Broncos win this game, I think it's a great spot for them. National TV, your new offense, it's a bunch of new weapons, and you, you know, Judy and, and Fant, um, KJ Hamler, Sutton, Drew Locke for a full year. I think it'll be a fun year. And Melvin Gordon, I always forget about Melvin Gordon, but you throw him in there as well. Um, it will be a pretty high scoring game if I had to guess. I, I once again, I see like a 31 24 type score here. I'm excited to see what Tennessee can do in a full year. Ryan Tannehill, of course, he was thrown in there last year. I think it was in Denver, actually, when he was thrown in there. So that's pretty funny. But um, it, sh- it should be a relatively co- close game, but it is one and a half yeah. points. I will take Denver there. I like them a lot this year. I think we're in agreement on that one. But, um, yeah, I, mean, I will take Denver. We could be wrong about it, but I think we're both in agreement there. So uh, I'll put the graphic up here for everyone we picked here. Our favorite bets. So your favorites this week, I believe, are the yeah. Colts minus seven, correct? Yes. And we have the Seahawks minus one. Those are your two favorites this week. All right. Um, my favorites are the Bills minus six and a half, which is funny because you picked the Jets, but uh, yes. hopefully I'm right about that one. <laughs> and then I have the Detroit Lions minus one and a half, which I think we're in agreement on. That's that. That was one I was also debating putting on the list. Uh, and before I go, because I know we're going to be wrapping things up soon. I think that relationship between Joe Judge and the Giants is very scary this year. Uh, he reminds me kind of a of a Brian Flores, a guy that just comes in and instantly has a connection with the team. Uh, I really like that video of uh, him sliding in the mud, trying to get the football Uh, as an Eagle fan. It even brought a smile to my face. So, Hey guys, you, you got a good one in Joe judge. I think we do have the right coach in place. I don't know about the roster. You know, I don't like the GM too much, but I, I think they at least got one part of it right so far. So let's hope we're right about that one. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we'll try to do this every week. Obviously, if you can't make it one week, I'll just have you text in your picks and I'll, I'll do it for yeah. you. But uh, yeah, let us know in the comments if there's any way we can improve. Obviously, this is the first time we're doing it, but hopefully you enjoyed and we will talk to you next week.